Hi friends, welcome to Restoration Church today. So glad that you've decided to join us today on this Labor Day weekend. What are you guys doing? Anybody out camping or maybe on a lake for one of the last times? We boating at the, shore. at the river? We are at the shore, that's right. Because our youngest child thinks that we go to the beach for her birthday. Every year. Which I'm not sure I'm going to argue with her about. <laughs> it's a great week to go to the shore. Her birthday happens to fall on Labor Day. So this year it that does. helps. That, and then two Jewish holidays. So yeah. we were like, sure, beach house prices drop. They Let's drop significantly <laughs> this week, right? The weather's so, looking okay so far. Yeah. No, hopefully great, no hurricane. It's a great week to be at the shore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, what we're doing. So that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so we are Ross and Emily Manders. We are excited that you're with us today. If you've been around for a little while and you're ready to let us know who you are, there's a, a link that's being dropped in the comments. We'd encourage you to fill that out. Tell us a little bit about yourself because when you do so, um, three cool things happen. First is that you... Are they cool, Ross? They are cool. They're awesome, actually. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> we haven't done one of these in a while. I have to make fun of you a little bit. They are... Uh, <laughs> They, uh, what happens? Um, you, you'll get a gift from us uh, for for us to say thank you. Welcome to welcome to Restoration. Um, we'll give three dollars to a local food bank in your honor. Uh, so you're helping those in need within our community just by telling us you are up that soon to like at least five. You know, actually, a lot of things are, are changing about okay, this process good. next good. week. Good, awesome. That'd so be really, because I'm I'm thinking these aren't so cool anymore. Starting on them for like starting on no <laughs> starting on September 12th, we're changing a lot of these things. That's actually. good. No, I know we've been talking about revamping it. So um, good. and then uh, what else happens? You get to be part of an awesome community. You get connected with you get our connected. information and what's happening at Restoration. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is which is a very important step. Mm -hmm. um, we're not super spammy. Like we send like one email a week mm -hmm. and a text. Like that's it, just to help you like know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, some, sometimes if like there's a men's event or something, yeah, we'll send a, a, spe a special email. text. Yeah, or, or targeted yeah. email. Yeah. But really, we're not like inundating. You're already overflowing if you're like me. Inbox. It's true. My inbox is ridiculous. That's true. My personal one. Yeah. Yeah, but yours is probably not. I just cleared out over a thousand emails this oh. week. From my inbox. Well, when I clear out mine, it's tens of thousands of emails. Does that stress anyone out? <laughs> Does not stress me out. Yeah, don't you have like 75,000 emails in your Gmail? Um, your I got it Gmail? down to like 12,000 this summer because I figured out how to do a mass delete, which is part of the problem. Mm. But it's back up there again. <laughs> and we are and Squirrel. squirrel. Tangent, yes, tangent. Yes. We hope that back to school has been going okay. We know that our Bristol friends don't even start until September 9th. Wow. So you guys are still anticipating that. So we're going to keep praying for all the transitions of all the people, all the humans. Mm -hmm. We know that there's some things that are being, being placed upon our state that a lot of people may not be happy about. But I would encourage you to continue to be kind. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Even to people you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, continue to remember that you are an ambassador of Christ. Whether you like it or not, people are going to know who Jesus is because of the way we behave. Or not. No, they will They will think God is a insignificant jerk because we well, are. Well, that's what I mean. Like, right. it matters. Like, one way or the other, you're going to convince know. people of something, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Also, one of my friends has been saying this to me a lot this week. She's like, I wasn't <laughs> really glad I wasn't born in a world war because... Hmm. This is really hard, and it feels like it just keeps getting hard again, and I just wasn't cut out for this. And I do think that there is this there is a mentality we need to have that this is it's it's long term. And at the beginning of this whole COVID pandemic, um one of the experts I was listening to said it takes eighteen to twenty four months to get all the way through it. And we are not there yet, folks. We're, We're just basically starting at eighteen, 18 months 18, right, right now. Yeah. So it's a long haul thing, and none of us have probably really lived through something like this in such a communal way i think that there have been wars and things but they've been off of our like, like they've not impacted our country they've yeah, impacted our no. military and their families but yeah that's true it's really different so hang in there hmm. we're getting there yeah don't have the stockholm syndrome right that's yeah the whole right. Thing. yeah yeah uh but anyway we um we we strive to bring goodness into our community Mm -hmm. We want to show the world the light of Christ and the love of Christ and all of these big questions that people are asking because the world is the way it is and people are, you know, there's just, there's a lot of well, I stuff. Think, I was going to say, I think we encourage you to ask the questions because that helps we build do. your faith. And you may find other religious organizations that do not want to do that. Like no, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We love questions. Yeah. So your questions are welcome. There. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, like, you also probably have neighbors and yeah. and coworkers and, and families that have yeah. a lot of questions about why the world is the way it is right now. And it's not just the pandemic; it's everything else that's going on in the yeah. world. Um, and so we we want to be a beacon of light. We want to be a beacon of hope. We want to bring the life of Christ into the chaos. Um, and so thank you for the way that, that you participate in doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, every time you give to the cause of Christ here, you help us. Um, bring that hope into the dark push world. Push back the darkness. And push right? back the darkness. So, mm-hmm. thank you to every single person who contributes financially to the cause of Christ, and and in so many other ways, whether you're serving or giving every time, your energy, talents, your talents, right? all of it. Yeah. Yeah. We want to say we want to say thank you. It doesn't matter. Um, God is doing a good work mm-hmm. through restoration, and we're excited for the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so please continue to do so. And um, there are, there are four easy ways to mm-hmm. give. Really? Um, well, online, I guess we're all online today. Yeah. So there's only four easy ways. Maybe oh, even, maybe, we're not in person. maybe even three easy <laughs> ways. You can give through text. You can yeah. give through um, our online online. What's I think all the web page. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Um, and you could give uh, through yeah. the app. Church Center app. When, that's what you mean when you say that, right? The app online mm-hmm. through texting. If you wanted to drop a check or in the end, in the yeah. mailbox, you could do that as well. That church at the back door. Yeah, at the back door. The red doors. Yep. So today is the first of the what day is it? The fourth of the month. Fourth, fifth, yeah, fifth. September fifth. Because Evelyn's birthday is tomorrow and Luke's birthday is on Tuesday. Yes, today is the fifth, which means it's the first Sunday of the month, which means that we get to partake in communion. And so right now, I would encourage you to um, go find something that's going to represent the blood of Christ, something that's going to represent the body of Christ. Could be a cracker, could be some juice, um, could donut. be a donut. <laughs> we we are pretty Bagel. low church around here. <laughs> mm-hmm. like some something to represent, and that's that becomes very important. Um, you know the the table, the Eucharist, mm-hmm. um, this thing that we call the communion. Um, it means the table of Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot to be grateful for, even in these dark days. We have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to give thanks for. What are you giving thanks for? Uh, well, today mm-hmm. I am remembering the gospel, mm-hmm. the shed blood of Jesus, You're really holy. the broken body. We're taking communion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, there's a lot, like, like he says, like, do this in remembrance, but like give thanks and do this in remembrance of me. Right. Uh, yeah. You give thanks. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to go into a whole sermon here because we got more to talk about later, but, okay. um, we, uh, the gospel is such a profound and unique beautiful thing and so we should give thanks for it we should give thanks for what christ has done for us Mm -hmm. um the grace that he has given us even though it's undeserved the life that he lived the death that he died the resurrection all is changing us um in a very dark and hopeless world it is the hope of the world Mm -hmm. and so let's uh let's take a moment and give thanks for all that god has done on our behalf this is this is not you know, we're not in relationship with God because we're good. We're not in relationship with God because we deserve it. We are in relationship with God because he has come near to us and his son, Jesus Christ, and all that he's accomplished. So wanting us to live uh, abundant lives, wanting us to live in the fullness of his grace. And so we're going to take a moment um, to say a prayer, and then we're going to sing some songs that kind of ref- direct our, our hearts and our minds towards the many blessings um, and the goodness of God, even in dark seasons. So would you say a prayer with us? Heavenly Father, I, I do want to give you thanks. I want to praise your name and, and provide you all the honor, Father, for all the good that you are doing um, through us and in us. Even when the days are dark, even when life seems painful and challenging, we, um, we as hard as it may say, consider it pure joy. Because we know that uh, these trials are helping us become more like you, which ultimately is the, the greatest good. And so may we take that perspective, may we consider it, may we, um, may we choose to think about our challenges that way. And uh, may we remember, Father, your goodness in light of all the darkness, your light in all, light all the darkness. Um, and may then we be filled with that light so that we can be um, a beacon of light to those who need it as well within our own community. So thank you for what you're doing here. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. We do pray this in the name of Jesus. I was blind, now I'm seeing in color I was dead, now I'm living forever I fell where you were, my 
my Redeemer. Well, I have been blessed beyond all measure. I was lost, now I'm found, my Father. I've been changed from a ruin to treasure. I've been given a hope and a future. Well, I've been blessed beyond all measure. Well, I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. You are good to me. Oh, 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 you are good to me. You were there in the valley of shadows. You were there in the depths of my sorrow. You're my strength, my hope for tomorrow. Well, I've been blessed beyond all. Blessing, counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. Well, I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Surely every season you are good to me. Oh, oh, oh you are good to me.
my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made I listen to your goodness is running out it's running out to me goodness is running out, running after me. My life laid down, surrender now. I give everything. Your goodness is running out, running after me. No, my life. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am in Father, we do want to take a moment and reflect and remember your goodness in a world of such great uncertainty, in a world where it seems like there is new pain and new turmoil and new chaos on the news throughout the world and our own personal lives every single morning. Let us remember your goodness, Father, when questions arise whether you are good. What are you doing in all the light of all this, Father? Where, where, where are you? Are you capable? Are you good? Do you care? And I pray that we might be a people who remember the, the bread that we, that we have taken and, and the cup that we have drinking, Father, and all that it represents. For when questions like that arise, Father, we may not know what the answer is entirely, but we know what the answer cannot be, Father. It cannot be that you do not love us. It cannot be that you do not care. It cannot be that you are not concerned with the state of the world for this bread and this cup and all it represents proves that you love us and that you care for us and you are concerned about the state of the world and the state of each individual person upon this planet. And so, Father, we thank you as we recognize your goodness and all that you have done, Father, to come into the mess of our own lives, Father, and the messes that we create, Father, to redeem them and to restore them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we honor you today, and we give you thanks in his name. Hey, welcome friends. I'm excited to uh, introduce you to my good friend David here in just a minute, but we are starting a brand new series titled, What Was the Point of That? Now we try not to be crass around here, right? But like this wasn't my question originally that I asked. I, I overheard this question being asked. Um, a friend of mine had asked it in context with a conversation he was having. And it's, it's almost like a lot of the world is having these bigger than life questions right now. Like, hey, why has the last year and a half been the way it is? Why does the world feel like it's um, going completely out of control right now. Uh, is there some grand purpose to all that we're experiencing? Why is the world the way it is? And so uh, we're we're trying to ask, you know, where's where's the goodness in it all? Like w with the chaos, with the way the world is, um, extreme weather, politics, racial injustices, of course, the pandemic. Um, what could God possibly be up to in all of this? And so throughout the series, we're going to have conversations like the one I'm about to have with, uh, with David here. And, and we're going to ask, what has God been, been doing in people's lives throughout the pandemic? Um, and so David, you and I have known each other for several years now. Yeah. And um, 
you you and I have similar hearts. I think we want we want to see this region of the world come to life in Christ. Um, we I think our hearts break over over hopeless situations, people who are far from God, people who aren't living in the abundant life of Christ. Um, we even have similar visions and mm-hmm. dreams about how to accomplish, you know, extending that hope in, into people's lives. Um, but we want to hear your story. We want to we want to hear uh, how God has been impacting you as of late. And so, tell us a little bit about life, like you know, prior to COVID. Think back to like, um, you know, eighteen months ago. What was your life like, mm-hmm. generally speaking? What was going on? Generally speaking, I would say I was like uh, suffering through depression mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of just thoughts. Uh, intrusive thoughts and um, and I really didn't have like any pinpoint where of where these things were and uh, for me personally I would just seek out therapy and as I could just be able to work through those things and eventually it came to the point where like uh, um, I would have a session with my therapist and uh, we were just discussing the memories and thoughts I just it was hard to discuss I would just had like ang- like anger experts in order to discuss them hmm. And like one thing she told me is like this is trauma. And then uh, after that, I was like, all right, I know what it is now. So let me just can you like let me take hold of that and really push through with it. But um, throughout that year, coming for the, from like December to the the year after, uh, working through that the pandemic hit, and I was not able to continue to discuss these things. Like my um, my therapist just said like I don't feel safe for you to be able to be in this area. Well, at least through online and go discuss these things. And, uh, hmm. and not having the same contact with your friends is just, like difficult. Uh, personally, I like to have contact with people in order to like avoid my situations or just sort of, like get things off my head. But being stuck with that, this allowed me just to continue just pushing and avoid this thing. Um, hmm. Hmm, yeah. So you were already you know suffering through depression, and then COVID hits, and then all of your community was taken away. Mm-hmm. Even even personal contact with a therapist to help you was forced to go online only. Um, and so, how did how did you deal with those early days of COVID? Like, when when it was really hard, when we were told not to be in community, uh, it was a lot of like nothing. Like, I, I I would just like write and continue avoiding this one thing I knew was a problem in my life, uh, mm. and and I just continue pushing through. Like, if I just don't think about it, I'll get better. And like May rolls around, and I and I seemingly felt better, um, but that didn't seem to be the case for me. Like, uh, eventually. Um, uh, everything just kind of went through. I became really stressed. I became uh, just with these like memories, these nightmares, and all these things as I like, kind of go through the like through my head. And um, I used to work a lot, uh, like because of it being an essential worker. But um, once that became work became difficult because of these things, I didn't. I, I felt useless. I felt helpless. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, so work may have been one of those places where you were able to maybe escape some of the, mm-hmm. the, the challenges and the feelings and the depression and exactly. some of those things. Um, but then even that was, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you found it to be challenging. Maybe that was taken away. Whatever. Um, so that's that's uh, that's really hard. So you 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 had trauma. Um, there was some really big issues that you had to deal with. COVID just kind of became a bomb, right? To kind of explode and to mm-hmm. enhance all of those various feelings and and circumstances and challenges that you're going with. So, so tell me a, a little bit more about, um, yeah, I, I hope hopelessness mm-hmm. is become, um, maybe a big theme in your life. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's been a big theme in your life for a long time. Like what has been your personal, um, the, the how, how has hopelessness manifested itself in your life throughout? Yeah. You know, your, your, your life prior to COVID and then during COVID. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, like I had like a lot of depression. I'm like, I mean, like for the past almost four years, I've been just been struggling with my self worth and value. Um, and then like a year after, just having just uh, an experience of some sorts where I just became hurt by just certain people and just being in, being put in these situations that uh, where I never got to process it fully because I didn't allow myself to process it. So you know, two years later, when I come to like understand I have trauma. And then like, oh, it's just trauma. And then later on, like, um, for instance, like I said earlier, it started becoming like a big predominant thing in my life where it was starting to affect my work, uh, work ethic. Mm. And um, that's a big deal for me, you know what I mean? That's the place where I like to be able to be used as. And yeah. if I feel useless at home, I feel useless at work, I really want to go seek out more help. So I remember this time where like I was sitting with, with my doctor and I was waiting for her to come in and I was just 
so anxious about it, like to, to like, able to express what is going on in my life. And I told her like I, I just get these like these nightmares and I get this stress and I know it's all coming from these memories and and I can't handle it. it. It just becomes just outbursts and I just don't know what to do and I just feel so so helpless in these moments. And uh, she told me like these are symptoms of PTSD. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, so there's a lot more to it. Hmm. And at that moment, I was just like, can you please give me something? Give me something because I can't do anything. And uh, she told me, I can't do anything. It's not my profession, so I can't help you at this moment. Right. So not only was I felt hopeless, the words came to my mind, like, I am hopeless. Yeah. If she's not able to help me, who can help me? Yeah. Um, what I can say is that I eventually did find a professional. I did get like medications. However, it was just like me avoiding the situation again. It <clears throat> numbed different things of my life, but the things that were numbed were like my depression. But my thoughts were even more, more loud because I'm not allowed to, I, I'm more able to think clear, yeah. clearly. And those were the more, more prominent things in my life that I thought more of. Wow, wow. So you had your, your history and your past and memories and um, voices that you have heard, people speak over you probably throughout your whole life. Mm -hmm. um, you had your sense of like, hey, I, I, I have no work ethic left. You feel drained in when you're at work, you feel like you should find some life there, but you don't find life there because you're not, you don't have, you have no eagerness or ambition to go there. Mm -hmm. um, really from every direction, right? You are, you're kind of being attacked and, and you start to feel completely hopeless. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, I can't imagine how, how that, how that feels like. Um, but it's, I, th I think something that you've realized maybe in our conversations that it's, it's, it's kind of a, a pandemic in and of itself, mm -hmm. hopelessness. I agree. Um, that, you know, you're not the only one who, who wrestles with this idea of like, what's the point of getting out of bed in the morning? You know, is there any hope? Is, is anything ever going to change? Mm -hmm. Um, how, how have you seen the kind of the pandemic, um, maybe high, I don't know, the highlight is probably not the right word, but how have you seen the pandemic, um, enhance maybe some of the hopelessness you feel, but not only you, but like the world in general or mm -hmm. the kids you work with? Yeah, I mean, I think at the, at that time I was really just in my own feelings, but to see like the systematic of like injustice within just like this this world, at least specifically here in the United States, I just see like you know like what happened like last summer and there's just all these things like this. Everything seems hopeless. You know what I mean? Like we don't have like a vaccine. We don't have this. We don't have like there's so many things that there's there's too many questions and there is to answers. Um, and uh, and at the time, like I thought to myself, like these people, like more people who I, I feel like they feel the same way. Like, there's obviously there are tons of more people who feel the same way I do. Yeah, this idea of hopelessness. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the study the studies show that um, you know the pandemic itself has done a lot of harm, of course, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, um, emotionally to the world. But everything that comes along with it. We are, we are a people so much worse off because of the pandemic. Again, not just the, what it does to the body, but um, the isolation, the, the hurt, the way we're speaking to each other now. Mm -hmm. um, humanity is less human than it used to be, mm -hmm. right? And so it seems like the slide towards hopelessness is um, only increasing as it goes on. And like the way that the, the world is generally going is, is more and more and more hopeless. Mm -hmm. It feels, and so it's not just a personal issue, it cuts, it's a global issue, exactly. right? And so so why, why does it break your heart? Of course it breaks your heart because you've had to wrestle with the personal feelings of hopelessness, mm -hmm. um, the PTSD, the trauma. Um, you, you've had to really struggle to, to pull yourself out of bed some mornings. Um, but why does it break your heart that the, the world and the youth of today are really experiencing such great hopelessness? Um. I think during the beginning of the pandemic, I was saying, I remember like just everything was moved to Zoom and I was Zooming with my friend and we were talking for a bit. I was like, David, a lot of people are going to be depressed after this. Yeah. And I thought to myself like, oh, holy cow. And prior to that, I have like, I'm a very intimate person that likes <coughs> conversations. So I would always like navigate those conversations to like their problems in life. And I think to myself, if that's how they feel right now, I can't imagine how they feel at this moment. Prior, like prior to then they felt awful and now I can't imagine how they feel now um, and person like you said earlier like I I felt that I understand that I relate to that and it like it hurts because 
like who is going to do these things a lot of like um like the climax of just everything that's going on in the world like we talk about these things but what do we do about it because at the end it does matter what action you take um but it does like break my heart to be able to see this like hopelessness just grow and uh, um and i've been checking the statistics for just like youth in general pennsylvania is like the top five states of hopelessness mm. and i think the number one's vermont wow. but exactly just like our this area in general is just becoming uh, predominantly a hub for that type of uh, epidemic. Yeah. But yeah. So, so you um, have discovered hope, mm -hmm. right? Like it's it's a, been a personal journey of yours. Um, but before we talk a, about how some of the changes you've made, in particular, to address hopelessness specifically in youth, mm -hmm. how did you discover hope? Like, where where's your hope come from? So that's actually a really interesting story. Um, I, I, again, like I struggle with this, these feelings and everything. Um, not, it was not just that summer where I had to go through it. Like I did a lot for myself to get to the point, Yeah. but it was not enough. Uh, I remember this during the semester, just my, my, I just, my mental health became a decline and, uh, and I was like, me, I can only do, I can only do, I can only do. And, uh, yeah, I just felt really hopeless. Um, and then it was the second day of the year and I had to go to work. I didn't want to go to work. Almost called out, but I went in anyways. And I was talking to my coworker, just like how I feel. And she's like, yeah, what's going on? Da, 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 da. And this guy walks in with this little cart. He's just, uh, he, he walks by and I was like, hey, Jesus loves you. And I was like, ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> like not being very serious. And he takes out this little tiny Bible and he just tells me, this is where you find truth and this is where you find help. Everything will be meaningless one day. Trust when I say that to you. And I said, okay, he hands it to me. He's like, oh, this is cute. Um, and I held the tiny Bible. He's like, all right, I'll catch you guys later. He leaves. And we start, like, Mike Cork and I got to have, like, that, a discussion about what faith looks like or, like, just faith in general. Um, as, I, as we're having that discussion, this guy comes back around. And he, the, his first comment was to both of us. But now at this point, it's just to me. He says to me, what got you saved? And I said, oh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, your typical answer to be able to display that you have your Savior. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 you misunderstood me. Why are you specifically saved? And everything just like, I, I, every, there's anything that was ever my thoughts. And I was just still that moment. I was like, what? And he told me earlier, like, let me tell you where you can find hope. Like, there's such a greater purpose in life. And you being saved is part of that purpose. And he just goes on and on. He's like, really? like that Bible right there, the first five books of the Bible, that's the gospel. And that's where you find your hope and purpose. And he just continues going on. I, could t I, I really don't remember everything he said. But those are the highlights I remember. And I take hold to my heart because they're true. Hmm. And once uh, he finished what he was saying, he tells me, I love you, my son. And he walks around, around the corner. My coworker looks at me dumbfounded, like, what the hell is that? And then um, he, she walks around, like, I walk around to see where this guy went, and he's gone. And then I disappear after that, too, because what do you do in that moment? Yeah. Um, and that's where I feel like my journey began. Like, I, like... Like, I finally understood, it was like a slap in the face with like how God was like, able to explain to me, saying like, there's more to this, you know? And, um, and I, I never really just fully surrendered this aspect of my life because it was always like, I can do it, I can, I can do it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so, I think that, that was definitely the decision to be able to think like, where do you want me to go, God? And how do I find this purpose that you put in me? And, um, and where I have found my hope these past Oh gosh, eight months <laughs> has been um, my purpose, and that's like the what the church is is to serve the Lord and and uh, and everything and anything you do, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, drop everything to do ministry or to serve the church, but it is means like live your life as if you're living it for like for your God. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've been clinging on to. Like my purpose is to serve the Lord, <laughs> and um, and my experiences go hand in hand with that. And since then, like, I've surrendered every single aspect of my life to him, um, of my mental health. Um, I'm not perfect. And I, I, and I come to recognize <laughs> yeah, that there's some yeah. aspects of my life I really want to change. And then, but that's where I find my hope, like, uh, serving the Lord and everything I do. Like, I found my purpose. Yeah. So, yeah. So, did you and your coworker think that was an angel? Like I, I definitely think it was a divine intervention. Yeah. Uh, she, once, I went on my 15 right after the whole ordeal. 
And she like wa walked to everybody and asked like, did you have any experience like this? Did you guys ask like if Jesus loved you? And no, every son said no. no yeah. And uh, a lot of people telling me like, just check the security cameras, ask him, ask him. And I was like, but I don't want to know because like, that's how the Lord spoke to me. Yeah. And that's meaningful to me. Yeah. I take a yeah. Hard. That's incredible. Wow. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a really incredible story. So what I find interesting about it is that, like, you, did you, did you grow up in church? Uh, yeah, I did. So you, you grew, you grew up knowing who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. You knew, you grew up probably knowing a lot of the answers to a lot of trivia questions about the Bible. And mm -hmm. like, if somebody came up to you like this guy did say, Hey, like, how are you saved? Or why are you saved? Yeah. Of course, you know the answer, right? Mm -hmm. And yet in those moments, like we can, we can know who God is. We can know who Jesus is. And yet we can still have this deep seated feeling of complete hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there, there's like this disconnect between who God is and what God promises. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people um, in the church experience that Yeah. because, and, I, and we talk about this all the time here. It's like a lot of people cling to the religion of Christ, mm -hmm. but they don't cling to a relationship with Christ. Exactly. And so for you, like you, you had to come to that point of just complete surrender, right? And that's really the key word, mm -hmm. I think, um, is that a lot of people are like, we come in, we put on our garb, we, we do the, the spiritual activities, we think we're doing things right, and yet we walk away and like nothing has changed. Like, mm -hmm. why aren't I full of life? Why aren't I happy? Why aren't I content? Why am I still fighting with everybody? Why am I still greedy? Why do we still hold on all these these hurts and these animosities? And it's because it's because so many have haven't experienced what you experienced. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the it's the complete surrender. It's getting to that point where there is there's nowhere else for me to turn. I just I need to lay it all bare, mm -hmm. and and let God pick up all the broken pieces. Um, is that is that a fair? Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And so you you kind of got to that point, and this this gentleman, angel, human, whoever it be, this yeah. this servant of God, um, kind of helped you, maybe illuminate some of those truths that mm -hmm. for so much of your life, even though you grew up in church, were kind of lost on you. you exactly. Know? Um, and so th these, I think it's interesting, right? So this gentleman, you had never met this guy before. Mm -mm, no. He had a little New Testament, right? Yeah. That he, that he handed you. Like how powerful is it that like we can have these simple conversations with co complete strangers that will completely change their lives? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to say to like our, our congregation just to like inspire them to be bold in their faith? Yeah, um, I think I think I, you are already probably know. Like uh, I quit my job to end hopelessness. Like I left yeah. I left uh, everything I felt was comfortable in the financial aspect to be able to focus on the work. Um, so you, you experienced this great transformation exactly. during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. You'd come to this low point, this guy intervenes, and then you're like, I, I, I want to help other people experience what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. And so you took some really bold steps. Yeah. So I, yeah. So, so tell us what those were. So, um, again, like I, I found my purpose by the end of the semester is like May where I found my purpose. And I told myself this summer, I really want to grow with, uh, what steps can I do? Um, and I remember just. And I was like at work and I'm not, I wasn't feeling fulfilled at work in these moments. And yeah. I, and I just, I felt like there's more. And I, that was the one word I kept saying, like, there's more, there's more, there's more. Yeah. And, um, and I, I just remember there was like, there was this moment where I was just like putting something away and, uh, and I was just kind of like feeling sad that I can't do more. Cause like what, I can't really do anything if I'm here, if my time is being spent, you know, working at Target or something. And, um, I just remember like a promise being sent to me. Like, I, like the Lord put on like uh, a verse in my head from Habakkuk, and it, like, um, and it said, "Behold, uh, I'm doing great things in your nation. If I were, if you were to be told, you would not believe me." And like, uh, so <laughs> obviously that's like roughly quoted, but um, that's like that's a verse that's went in my head. I was like, and and I just felt this promise like something good is about to happen. And I held on to that. Like, I'm gonna follow what you want me to do with that, Lord. Um, and eventually it just became leaning towards like leave, leave, leave. And I was just like, ah, oh, but, uh, you know, um, I don't know where these steps are, like the climax of work our uh, economy is and, you know, but eventually, I remember this one day, like I had the heavy urge, like to be able to say, like, I'm going to follow what the Lord wants to do. And I go to the computer and I don't do it. Hmm. And um, I clock out and I go home and I'm like praying to God, like, what do you want me to do at this moment? You make it a, a sign more than clear as day. And, um... As I'm like about to pull up to my uh, driveway, uh, a song pumps on, but it's not a song. It's like the conclusion to the album. It was like by For King and Country. And it was like the epilogue. And then he's like, they begin to say like, uh, run wild, to risk everything, to hold nothing back, 
to lay it all on the line. Your, your reputation, your success, your comfort. It's that moment when fear is overrun by faith. And obviously, like, there are the rest of those things I uh, follow with it. But that phrase by itself made me understand, like, I have to do what I have to do. Um, so, um, again, I still was like, all right, heard that, but what's the sign, God? <laughs> you know I mean? Like, I'm still waiting. Yeah. And then um, I went with my girlfriend, and she was just, like, telling me, like, all these verses, all these verses. And uh, it was basically during the same series we are talking about, like, uh, Philippians and a piece of passage for all understanding. Mm -hmm. And that phrase was, like, uh, throughout that whole week. And she says that one phrase, peace that surpasses all understanding. It's like, all right, if that's not more clear than that, then I'm going to go. Yeah. I went inside, and everybody looked at me like, you're doing it. And I'm like, I'm doing it. And they said, why? Why are you doing this? I'm like, because I know my purpose, and my purpose is to end hopelessness among teens. Wow. And I quit, <clears throat> and I got out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I put my two weeks in. It's not like I left, left. But yeah. um, but that's where my, I realized, like, this is what I have to do. And I wanted to partner. Like, I've been interning at Trios for two years. Um, it's about to become three, which I'm really excited about. But um, that's where I felt glad to be able to do that. And, uh, and such, like, um, yeah, that's where hmm. I believe uh, hopelessness can be fulfilled through hope of a loving, a living God. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, so many, there's so many nuggets to pull out of this, this story that you just shared. Um, the, the first, I think, is, is that... When was the last time you read Habakkuk? Uh, uh, maybe two years ago. It's yeah, been so a while. Isn't, isn't it incredible how, like, when you know the Word of God, though, like, when you need the Word of God, like, these, these verses that you've maybe buried in your heart a long, long time ago rise to the surface? Mm -hmm. And you're like, who reads Habakkuk? Like, yeah. It's an, it's an awesome book, right? Three, three little chapters. And it's sweet, but like you needed that, um, that inspiration and that inspiration comes to you through God's word. And that's really incredible. So I would encourage our people um, to continue to be in the word. We're doing the study as a church even to read through the word. And uh, beginning October 1st, by the way, we're, we're kind of revamping and reintroducing the reading through the New Testament together as a church. Mm -hmm. And so cool. I really encourage people to do that. Um, something we talk about here all the time is uh, where God guides, God provides. It's, it's certainly the story of Emily and I. It's the story of restoration. It's the story of Josh Ritter and Anne, you know, starting Treehouse. It's your story. And um, that, that phrase came to me when I was preaching several years ago in Exodus. And I remember, I remember learning um, through my study of the Hebrew that, uh, that God called the Israelites to enter the Red Sea before he began to part the waters. It's like, who does that? Like, who starts to venture into the sea before the waters are even separated? Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of what he called you to do. Yeah. It's like, I don't have all the answers. I don't know how I'm going to make a living. Mm -hmm. I don't know where my funds are going to come from to pay for college or for rent or for food or everything, anything else that is on my plate, right? But, yeah. but I, I feel that God is calling me to do this thing. To end hopelessness among youth, I need to invest fully into God's purpose for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to start to tread into the water before the sea is even parted. And it was at that point, of course, when the Israelites started to go into the water that God separates mm -hmm. the Red Sea. And it takes all night, right? And so, yeah. and so they're like, they're sloshing through, you know, knee deep water while the sea in front of them is being parted. Um, and so they're continually walking through. I think that's such a powerful image, but um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so in regards to, um, to Treehouse in particular, um, you know, how, how is God revealing himself to you as you take these steps? Like what's what's the fruit of your labor so far? You've been with Treehouse for two years, and, and of course their yeah. their mission is to end hopelessness among youth, mm -hmm. and and we've already talked about like hopelessness is a, is a pandemic in and of itself, mm -hmm. especially in youth today. Agreed. Um, you know, even even in very stable households, like like I think that what Emily and I provide my family, even the household you grew up mm -hmm. in, right? Exactly. Like, there there's hopelessness within youth by the f mere fact that they are youth living in today's culture. And so what, what is, what has been the fruit? Like what, how have you seen God reveal himself to you in this ministry? Um, well, if we're talking like beginning, beginning, uh, when I first started coming here and I saw a treehouse, like I knew immediately like, I had to be part of this. And, uh, four months, five months later, uh, I realized that this is something the Lord wants me to do. So I decided to go to Karen to do youth ministry. Um, Two years later, I come today, like, uh, you'll just see these stories, these life transformations, and see these kids just, like, well, from when I saw them to, like, now, and the ministry that we're able to do, like, showing them compassion uh, to not everybody, like, again, like, I'm sure that most people here know that not every single kid that goes there is a believer in Christ, right. and be able to demonstrate the gospel. 
or demonstrate the compassion that we have for them. Those are all things from Christ, and they get a different perspective of what the gospel is. And for me personally, just uh, leaving my job, um, you know, it is such a scary thing to do. And I could tell you, like, for two months, I did not get a single penny off it. Mm. Um, and it's not because people didn't believe in it. It was just like, you know, um, it was just that moment where I'm like waiting for the Lord to be able to provide. There's like so many moments where I was like, um, I reached out to people because I was anxious and I was just like, uh, uh, but that's what, those were the moments where I had to take a break and say like, no, if I believe the Lord is going to provide, I have to believe and surrender that to them. Yeah. Um, a week later, I decided to be able to push myself again. And then, um, I actually felt, had confidence. And at that moment, um, I placed like a video that I put on my, all my social medias and, and I, I just had confidence by just, uh, what the Lord can do. And, um, eventually, you know, I reached out to a few people, all these things, and things are coming together. Like, I, I have, like, just different great opportunities that the Lord is providing me. And not only that, just, I think it's crazy. Like, these past, since it was, I, I quit my job back in ju late June, and, like, maybe mid-August, I started getting, like, um, I heard people saying, like, I want to participate with you through funding. And I'm like, great. And another person. And then another thing. And so, the Lord is fulfilling my needs. It will, well, first he fulfilled my needs in the bare minimum because I had to go back to school. I'm like, I need money to go to go drive my car. <laughs> and then he surpassed it by just a little bit more, a little bit more. And I can, like, what I can say is that I am 60% raised. And I uh, praise God for that. But, wow. um, you know, it's still like that moment. Like, I still have to be able to put surrender to that because there's that other 40%. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, me being able to just continue pushing forward because there is like there was definitely times where I wanted to give up because yeah. of just someone that something said or like my own thoughts, just different things that maybe like I want to quit, but quitting felt wrong. Mm -hmm. So I continued to push forward because mm -hmm. that's what the Lord wanted me to do. Yeah. So um and not to only that, like the these past two months just working with the youth here have been um fruitful. Uh I just like me being more available just to be like, hey, I need your help right now. I'm like I'm able to go do that. Um, not just during the program time, like after, before, or any day. It's just that is one of my favorite things because before then I would not be able to participate in such a way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, faith, I, I say this sometimes, faith is a muscle that needs to be exercised mm -hmm. in order for it to grow. Um, because like, like any muscle, right, if you, if you don't exercise it, it's going to um, become dormant and weak and... But but you you found like the last several months from quitting your job it's like constant, over and over again choosing to grow your faith by trusting in, in God. Mm -hmm. I I love how you've taken these steps of faith, mm -hmm. um, consistently choosing Christ even when the world tells you that you're making a, a dumb decision, mm -hmm. when you're not making a wise decision, when you're not making a safe decision. The safe decision would have been to keep working in a corporation that continued to give you a paycheck, but you really felt called to invest your time, your energy, your resources, your mind, your heart into youth who are experiencing the same hopelessness that you experienced, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, how can we as a congregation partner with you? Yeah, well, I think there's like many ways. I mean, I really do believe in this idea of collaboration like you keep speaking of and I, I just get so inspired. I'm like, yes, yes, that's how the church should be. <laughs> and um, and if you, personally, if you guys know of somebody that's like a kid uh, or a parent that's displaying concern about a kid, like bring them to Trios. Like there's such a great right. program that we're able to display that uh, idea. Um, even just helping out, uh, we do like need volunteers as our kids are growing, and I I, I can only imagine it's going to be start growing a lot more mm -hmm. since this pandemic's ending. Yeah. And um, uh, I hear all these kids saying there's no people to give me therapy because they're all backed up and. We're like the good in between. We're able to for them to be able to express what they need to express and get the mentorship that they do need. Yeah. While we are not therapists, we are able to help them to go through these things. Right. Um, the last one is like a financial need. Um, and some of our, we, not just myself, like uh, you know, we have other staff members here that are not, uh, you know, fully in in the the best financial spots because they have not fully funded and stuff like that. Right. Like myself. So. Again, if they have that, if they are able to give that need, um, if you have like that, um, if you see that hopelessness in youth here or out there, or if you know that somebody like, if that's where your heart is leading to, to be able to give compassionately, then we would love to be able to have that. It doesn't matter how much you give, you know, $5 is $5. If like 
1,000 people give $5, that's $5,000. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you give. If that's what your heart is leading you to, and that's if, the, if, if finance is the way you can help, we'll love to be able to take that. Yeah. But um, I believe the last one, and I think it's the most important one that, um, that we keep highlighting here at this, at this church is that prayer. Um, let me think, like uh, Acts, 2, Acts 2.42 very, it explains like the, the church be able to do whatever they can, but the number one thing they always do is prayer. Right, yeah. uh, and I think it's such a powerful tool. <clears throat> um, so yeah, prayer just be able for Treehouse and for the staff and for the kids. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you know of anybody, youth age, sixth mm -hmm. to 12th grade, yeah. send them to Treehouse because mm -hmm. it's a phenomenal organization. Exactly. Um, volunteer if you can, right? Mm -hmm. Because you need more people to continue to mentor and, mm -hmm. and help these kids who uh, many of them are experiencing great hopelessness. Mm -hmm. um, give if you can, um, because the reality is like, yeah, this is the youth program for Restoration Church and Restoration Church as a whole out of our budget contributes a large, a large amount of money towards mm -hmm. it. Um, but you, Josh, uh, Nicole, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Dave are all, are all funded by the generosity of people, mm -hmm. right? As, right? As am I, right? Like, yeah. like we all are, right? That's how the church, is, that's how the church runs and we love uh, being generous as a church. So if, if you feel compelled to contribute financially to the cause of, of Christ through Treehouse, then absolutely please do that. We'll, we'll put a link up on the video. Mm -hmm. um, and then prayer, obviously, yes, yes, yes. Let's continue to pray for, for kids um, and for the leaders. Um, so so if, if um, the pandemic hadn't happened, you know, if, if you hadn't gone through, you know, that, that kind of decline into hopelessness yourself, mm -hmm. And that gentleman never would have passed. Like, what? Just you know, cast a vision. Where, where, what trajectory would your life do you think have been on? Like, I think I'd still be working at Target, um, still trying to figure out things in my life by myself, yeah. and not letting the Lord use the work. But then again, like if we're speculating, I would, I would not for sure, but not for sure because the Lord works in just different ways. But I would definitely think that it would just be a lot of me effort, and I think my steps of faith would not be as big as this that I have done these hmm. past. Three months. Yeah. Yeah. So the pandemic really just brought you to a place of complete surrender. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And so maybe without the pandemic, you, you never would have gotten to that point because I, I tell people this all the time. If there is even a thread that we can hold on to that is of the world, um, then we're going to hold on to it. Exactly. I, th I think that's kind of human nature. Mm -hmm. Like if there is something that I can cling to, whether it's that last dollar in my bank account whether it's some semblance of a relationship, whatever it is, we will cling to a thread if it means that we're not gonna fall deeper into the pit. And sometimes we just need to let that thread be cut mm -hmm. and hit rock bottom because then we recognize that, that that's where Jesus is mm -hmm. and he wants to carry us out of that pit. Exactly. You know? And so I'm, I'm really grateful for your story. What, what would you say to somebody, if there's somebody listening right now who is struggling with hopelessness and they're just like, I don't, I don't see what the point of it all is, the world is, completely lost, broken, completely messed up. People are just beyond saving. You know, if they just think that, that getting out of bed in the morning is pointless, what would you say to them? I would say, um, I think if every breath you do take is an opportunity that the Lord has provided you every morning, hmm. if you're still breathing, there's hope. Um, you know, that's what, that's what I always think or even to be able to say to somebody because um, I know it's something difficult to hear but it's true. Um, like I said earlier, our, our purpose is to serve the Lord and he is able to provide us everything that we need and to um, find us that value and find us that hope. Um, but yeah, that would, that's what I would say to my, my brothers and sisters in Christ because um, that, is, that is truth and that is the hope yeah. that we are able to have. The gospel, you know, the, he died on a cross for a reason. It's not, it's not for us to be able to live and dwell in the things of the world. As that man told me, everything will be nothing. Just the only thing we can cling on to is the hope of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Thank you. Well, can I say a prayer for you? Sure. And, and for youth and for our congregation, and then we're going to close it down. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for David and his willingness to, um, to share his story and to be vulnerable enough to share that he was in a, in a really dark place until he got down to that rock bottom point where, where he found you. And uh, having known you for his whole life, um, he really had to come to that point of surrender. And so I, I pray that all of us listening in and watching this this morning um, may likewise come to that point because surrender is that key word. Um, we are constantly trying to fix our own problems. We are constantly trying to hold on to those threads. And, and I just pray that we would surrender our hearts as broken as they may be before you lay them bare, Father, and let you put them back together. 
Um, so if anybody's struggling with hopelessness right now, I pray that they would reach out. I pray that they would, um, they would not let that uh, define who they are. They would not let past experiences define them. They would not build their identity on what someone has said to them or what someone has done to them or what someone continues to do to them. But they would claim an identity on you and your love for them. And that they would know that you and you alone are the great hope of the world. Thank you, Father, for all that you've accomplished for us so that we could live an abundant life. And we do pray this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, friends, next week we are back live and in person here at Restoration Church. You can also find us on Facebook and on YouTube starting next week as well. But I would like to invite you back here live and in person to join us as we have another phenomenal conversation with a good friend of mine about how she has been changed because of the pandemic and all that God did through the last 18 months to change her life. You do not want to miss it. We'll see you again next week. God bless.